Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Coming to the third part of wear, uh, where we will discuss about uh, the fatigue wear, surface fatigue wear. So, if you just quickly remember that under surface fatigue category, there are uh, four subcategories of wear. So, basic difference between surface fatigue wear and other kind of wear is that in surface fatigue, the load is actually fluctuating in nature instead of static compressive for other case of wear. So, in, uh, in this particular case, we observe usually four different types of wear or wear proceeds in four different modes. One is pitting wear, spalling wear, impact wear and brinelling. So, now coming to the first type of wear that is pitting wear. So, basic features or maybe common features, common feature of all types of wear is that they are in all cases the load is actually fluctuating in nature and uh, as a result of which uh, the fatigue is the main mechanism for initiation of the damage during wear. So, in case of pitting wear uh, the name is after the look of the surface after the wear has occurred. So, after pitting wear you the surface looks like small small uh, pitted they pitted uh, surface pitted uh, zone. So, if you see the pitted wear surface, you will find small small pits on the surface and uh, pits are pit uh, area as well as uh, pit depth depends on the kind of applied load as well as the meeting surface. And uh, in this particular case again, you will find that uh, the typical load is fluctuating in nature and examples of the pitted uh, pitting wear is cam paths, gear paths, rail and metal tires. If you see the cases, you will find that in all cases the component is subjected to heavy load which is compressive and zero, compressive and zero in nature that is fluctuating in nature and there is also sliding phenomena. So, sliding velocity is there or sliding movement is there and in addition to that there is that compressive zero kind of loading. So, in this case what happens is that uh, because of compressive and zero loading there is subsurface crack initiation at the point of discontinuity. So, if the component is coated surface then at that uh, point of interface there is a pit initiation or crack initiation. If it is a component uh, of composite in nature then you will find that at the interface between the second phase and matrix there is crack initiation. And as soon as the crack initiates, it propagates at a much faster rate and causing the chip formation and then materials get removed. So, after the end of the wear, you find lot of pits on the surface. So, typical surface treatments are carburizing, selective hardening. So, in this case, if you are interested to combat the fatigue wear, any kind of fatigue wear, you have to be careful about toughness as well in addition to hardness. So, carburizing operation then typical hardening and then you have to go for uh, tempering operation. Selective hardening you have to go for and then you have to if necessary you have to go for tempering operation. So, these are the treatment you have to follow in order to improve the uh, service life of the component under the action of pitting wear. Spalling wear is a kind of wear where is where there is polishing continuous polishing of the material from the surface. This is the typical kind of wear which, which is observed on the coated system having very weak interface. The examples include electroless plating, electroplating, CVD, physical vapor deposition, chemical vapor deposition in those all coated component if subjected to fatigue loading or compressive and zero wear loading during wear you will find that the problem starts or crack initiation occurs at the interface between the coating and that of substrate and then subsequently there is a failure of the material by subsurface crack formation and crack propagation process. 
So, spoiling wear is quite dangerous form of wear. So, where there is possibility of spoliation or spoiling wear, then you have to avoid the coated surface or use the surface or use the surface treated component where the interface is very much strong and adherent. <coughs> so, typical examples are like coated cam and gears, plated mechanical stops, thin plating on reciprocating system, there basically you find this kind of wear. So, if you are interested to get rid of this kind of wear, you have to think of applying a coating which is or applying a hard face layer which is hard as well as tough in nature and better avoid the coated component in those cases. Third type of wear is impact wear, again here impact loading very heavy uh, load is applied on the surface for a very short duration and then again if load is released. So, there the kind of wear you see is called impact wear. So, this is again fatigue wear or fluctuating loading, but loading unloading time is very less actually very low. So, you load it for a very short of time and then very short duration and then unload it, load for a very short duration and unload it. So, when the component is subjected to heavy loading and unloading for a very short duration, there the kind of wear you, for, you, so you see is called impact wear. Typical examples include hammer heads, riveting tools, pneumatic drills, so which is subjected to heavy loading for a very short period of time and then immediately after that you unload it. So, very high compressive loading and unloading, this is responsible for this kind of wear. So, if you see the surface, you will find that there is deformation on the surface, then there is subsurface failure and then removal of the material in chunk. So, usually if you see the surface, you will find very big holes on the surface in a present in a discontinuous fashion. So, if you are interested to get rid of or minimize or take precautionary measure to minimize this kind of wear, you have to look for the hard facing operation and hard facing different iron cobalt or nickel based super alloys are hard faced alloys are available. So, you apply typical weld overlaying technique in order to develop the hard face layer on the surface and uh, that layer will help the component to avoid that uh, impact wear. And finally, brinelling is a kind of phenomena which again is a wear, but in brinelling there is no loss of material, but deshaping of the component. So, brinelling is a kind of phenomena which again occurs on the wheels on rails rolling elements bearings or mold faces where the there is static overloading of the component or maybe when you keep the car in the um, hailing environment where hail storms are there. So, they are basically small small stones they basically get indented on the surface of the car body. So, after the indentation is over you get uh, indented mark on the surface. Though there is no material loss but basically there is a safe deshaping of the component or deshaping of the body. So, that is of no use so naturally you have to repair it, again this is the loss of the component. So, if you are interested to get rid of brinelling then again you have to avoid the uh, typical impact uh, phenomena or otherwise you have to apply a very thin elastomers on the surface which will actually which is a shock absorber and subsequently reduce the probability of the uh, brinelling uh, wear in actual service. Now, in summary we can say that we, we, we discussed about different types of wear and uh, particularly adhesive wear, abrasive wear, then uh, erosive wear as well as surface fatigue. So, in all kinds of wear the different though they are of different modes. But uh, one special feature which is common for all kinds of wear is that if you increase the hardness naturally you can reduce the probability of wear. So, this is the first thumb rule. So, if you can increase the surface hardness by some extent you can certainly reduce the probability of wear. Second important thumb rule is that if you can reduce the coefficient of friction you can definitely reduce the wear phenomena or probability of wear. Third thumb rule is that if you just reduce the hardness differences naturally that or the other way like increasing the hardness of your component or reduce the hardness differences 
then naturally you can reduce the probability of this type of wear. And finally, you can also reduce the probability of this particular wear by typical uh, application of lubricants when it is specially the uh, adhesive wear driven mechanism. So, these are the different ways by which you can combat the probability of different types of wear and uh, this is the slide which shows you the information about application of different surface treatment techniques since uh, the last uh, last uh, decades and also uh, since last several years which are applied on the component in order to reduce the probability of the wear in service. For example, in the bronzes there would be there used to be bronze bearings, then iron bearings, then case hardening of iron is very old uh, process for improving the hardness and reducing the wear rate of the ball and roller bearing process uh, in 133 BC. Again if you see the wear driven machine there uh, the people apply different types of oils in order to reduce the coefficient of friction in man and animal driven machine. Then in steam driven machine they applied different types of uh, the different modern steel they applied instead of uh, typical iron or uh, iron, that iron was replaced by different modern steel which was having higher wear resistance property. In addition to that the lubricant application is very much was quite common since over long past decades and years and uh, finally, the steel was uh, stool steel was invented and when tool steel was invented it was having very high hardness. So, hydraulic and pneumatic devices, internal combustion engines they were actually replaced or they were developed by manufactured by tool steel. And hard facing and weld overlaying were another op very important technique who started operating since 18, uh, 19, 1977 or so even 1900. Uh, since 1900 they uh, started applying CVD and also hard facing weld overlaying, coal cladding, roll cladding. So, these are very old technique, but still came long after the actual uh, application of the lubricants. Hmm. Then vacuum coating technique came into picture in 1977 and after the invention of laser and electron beam people started applying the laser cladding, laser surface treatment process and then ion implantation. PVD coated substrate. So, right now if you just see the scenario people do apply weld well overlaying, people do apply nitriding, carburizing process, different laser electron beam or plasma based process, process as well as physical vapor deposition and chemical vapor deposition technique in order to improve the hardness of the surface and as a result of which uh, they, just, they just get uh, improved performance of the component. Now, if you quickly go through the role of hardness on the wear, you will find that as you go on increasing the hardness naturally, uh, you will find that uh, uh, this is the case for uh, abrasive and abrasive wear as well as uh, erosive wear. If you jo just go on increasing the hardness naturally, you will find that uh, after a certain hardness value, cutting mechanism play important role. And on the other hand, the elastic modulus uh, also plays very important role, the ratio of elastic modulus and uh, typical surface energy which we saw earlier that uh, it plays important role in determining the coefficient of friction. So, as you go on reducing the E by C that surface energy value then you will find that coefficient of friction also reduces and as a result of which you will find that. Uh, then uh, wear volume also increases. So, basically if you just quickly summarize you will find that the material parameters which play important role in determining the uh, wear behavior of the component they are uh, hardness, they are Young's modulus, they are surface energy, they are toughness. Hmm. So, those these all parameters play important role in determining the wear behavior of the material. So, whenever you design any component for improved wear resistance you have to think of the kind of wear that is operating and also think of the materials parameters which you are based on which you are designing the component. Now, if you quickly go through the different uh, 
wear parameters as I mentioned you wear parameters and also material parameters wear parameters means the different types of wear which are operating and the characteristics of the different kinds of wear you can easily understand the characteristics of different kind of wear when you discussed about different modes of wear. So, for example, if you talk about characteristics of low stress abrasion that there the surface looks like uh, fine scratching full of fine scratches. When you talk about high stress abrasion on the surface there is formation of deep scratches as well as big holes on the surface. When you talk about uh, typical uh, uh, polishing wear then surface looks like polished in nature. When you talk about gouging wear again on the surface there are presence of big holes on the surfaces along with that there are also scratch marks. So, these features are very important to be noted down otherwise it is it would be very difficult for you to rec recommend typical surface treatment technique which you are applying for combating that kind of wear. Similarly, if you talk about characteristics features of the erosion in solid impingement there are very fine feet formation. Fluid impingement there are always the impingement marks as well as pits are there. Cavitation erosion there are formation of big cavities on the surface. In slurry erosion again there are formation of large numbers of pits on the surface having discontinuity having uh, typical directionalities. If you talk about adhesive wear in short fretting wear you will find that on the surface there is a small small pit formation as well as a fold formation. Simple adhesive wire you will find there is always a point of the adhesive joint formation which are present and the pits are there in a discontinuous fashion. In scissoring there is actually joint formation between the two surfaces. In gulling wire there is again the flow of the surface is observed the material is material flow and as a result of which there is deshaping of the component and in oxidative wire there are presence of oxides on the surface which if you are interested to know you have to go for typical uh, x-ray diffraction analysis to know the kind of oxide that is forming and how it is present on the surface. Similarly, in surface fitting also pitting phenomena pitting wire can be concluded on by observation of the surface you will find small small pits are there. Spalling wire you will find spallation of the coating on the surface. In impact where you will get impact mark on the surface and in brinelling there is drained formation. So, these are typical characteristics of different kinds of wear and one important thing that is uh, that you should know is that depending on the characteristics you have to know which kind of precautions you should take or which kind of surface treatment techniques you should apply in order to get rid of different types of wear. Now, if you quickly go through the ways by which you can measure the kinetics and mechanism of wear, <coughs> it is very important whenever you see the failure of the component, you have to first of all from the investigation of the failed surface, you get to know about the kind of failure that is predominating in that particular component for a given application. But on the other hand, it is important that you should also know the way by which you can measure the kinetics of that particular failure as well as know the mechanism of that failure. So, if you quickly go through the kinetics of the wear uh, measurement there are different ways by which kinetics of the wear may be measured. So, like pin on disc wear testing machine, ball on disc wear testing machine different machine different uh, wear testing units are available where the component is used as a pin somewhere, the component sometimes is used as disc as well and there is a relative motion between the two surfaces. You can just have the simulated condition by applic applying lubricants by increasing the temperature by applying the different uh, uh, different different uh, liquids in between uh, so that the component uh, the environment is a little bit simulation simulative environment as that of is used in actual condition and then you have a relative movement between the two surfaces. So, the movement may be the sliding it may be reciprocating movement it may be fretting movement these all movements you can always control externally with the help of the software and by you can vary the load you can vary the time. So, what you do is that you try to find out the total amount of material loss or you measure the mass loss of the material as a function of time 
as a function of the sliding velocity, as a function of applied load, as a function of temperature, as a function of the uh, media concentration or media composition. So, these all things you measure and then finally, find out the specific wear rate or normal wear rate as a function of time. So, this for example, in case of abrasive wear you have you do not give any kind of uh, lubricant you just have the uh, abrasive meeting surface and your surface is there is the component surface you have the relative movement between the two surfaces. If it is adhesive wear then your another meeting surface must be of similar composition based on the actually based on the actual service condition of the component. So, that adhesive joint formation is promoted. In case of surface fatigue, you can have fluctuating motion instead of static motion, static compressive loading of the surface. In case of fretting wire, you can always induce uh, fretting motion between the two surfaces with the help of the oscillation. So, like that you can simulate the condition so that different uh, modes of wear as I discussed, they are actually their condition is fulfilled. And at, at the end of the wear test, if it is erosion testing, then in that case your media is not solid and that kind of testing which you apply is a little different. There basically you have the media, media which is uh, made of which is full of liquid or foreign particles, uh, solid particles uh, disperse in the liquid and then you have the movement of your component, relative movement of the component which is done by either by moving the liquid or maybe by movement of your component and then at regular interval of time you measure the loss of mass because of the wear. Usually you will find that in all kind of wear abrasive, adhesive and surface fatigue these all kind of wear, wear rate is proportional to that of uh, the hardness of the surface like higher the hardness of the surface lower, lower will be the wear rate, wear rate will be proportional to the applied load inversely proportional to the hardness of the surface, wear rate will be proportional to wear will be the proportional to uh, applied load and wear will also be proportional to the sliding discharge. So, there is typical Archer's equation which actually gives you information about the kinetics of wear or rate of wear which actually uh, which is nothing but uh, it is uh, proportional to applied load proportional to uh, that sliding distance and inversely proportional to that of uh, hardness and there is a proportionality constant which is actually called k and coefficient in case of adhesive wear it is completely coefficient of friction but in case of other mode of wear uh, along with coefficient of friction there are also sub several other factors which come into picture but it is a constant value for the specific materials combination in a specific environment. So, by this particular uh, um, ways you can measure the kinetics of the wear and if you are interested to know the mechanism of wear then you have to go for typical microstructural observation of the field surface after wear. Mm. So, usually what you do is that you take the field surface you do scanning electron microstructural observation after proper without proper cleaning because if you clean then you will lose the own debris. So, without cleaning you see it under microscope you see what are there on the surface and uh, if it is naturally high vacuum scanning electron microscopy you have to clean the surface you cannot take the component along with the own debris, but if it is low vacuum scanning electron microscopy you can always see it with, with the debris. So, if it is high vacuum system then you have to collect the debris. So, you can analyze it separately, you can collect the debris as well as surface then you can go for extra diffraction analysis to know what are the phases that are present in the debris as well as what are the phases that are present on the surface. And you can also do micro hardness measurement on the surface to see whether there is any change in hardness. But typically if you do scanning electron microscopic observation and x-ray diffraction technique you get the idea about the mode by which the wear proceeded in your case. So, scanning electron microscopic observation is very important it gives 75 percent of the information and x-ray diffraction technique gives you information about the composition change on the surface. For example, 
afterward usually there there should not be any change in composition but if it is adhesive wear there may be some compound formation at the interface between the adhesive joints because uh, because of change in temperature because of the vitreous combinations for example you go on having the movement of copper on aluminum surface so in that case copper and aluminum there and if you show go through the phase diagram you'll find that there are a lot of aluminide formation uh, at the in the phase diagram so if you if there is uh, adhesive joint formation if temperature is very high over there you will find that there is aluminide formation at the interface and that aluminum aluminide will naturally won't be there as aluminide uh, and then uh, adhesive joint because in that case the mode of wear will be scissoring kind of things neither in copper aluminum combinations there is a scissoring phenomena but if that aluminide forms then naturally during wear the aluminum will get detached from the aluminum surface because aluminum is having lower hardness. So, as it detached as it is detached from the aluminum surface it gets accumulated at the interface between copper and aluminum. So, when it gets deta when it gets uh, accumulated at the interface between copper and aluminum naturally it would aggravate the wear further because after that if you see the wear mechanism it would no more be the typical adhesive wear it would be abrasive wear because the aluminides are harder than both copper and aluminum. So, when they are present as hard particles at the interface they will cause the wear of both copper and aluminum. So, this is very interesting uh, phenomena. So, whenever you talk about adhesive wear you will find that initial mechanism of wear or initiation of the wear is because of adhesive joint formation but propagation occurs because of three body three body uh, wear actually. So, this three body wear can be abrasive wear can be adhesive wear uh, can be anything for example, if at the interface there would be copper formation then naturally the three body because of three body wear the wear rate would be reduced to a little extent because the presence of copper would act as the lubricant. Uh, so, after the three body wear you will find that there will be loss of contact between the two surfaces. So, as a result of which it helps in reducing the wear, wear kinetics. So, the three particles which are forming at the interface is very important and which gives you information about the mechanism of wear. So, as a result of which it is very important that after the wear is over you basically collect the own particles and then do XRD analysis to know the kind of uh, particles that has formed and to also infer information on the mechanism of wear. So, this is what is shown here for example, what you do for the mechanism of wear you have to analyze the own surfaces you have to see do see the do the own debris analysis properly and you have to also see the or analyze the lubrications lubricants which was added if at all during the service and finally, you can go for also transmission electron microscopic observation if you are very much sure about any layer formation on the surface. So, these in a joint way gives you or combining combining these all investigations give you information about the mechanism of wear and when you know about the kinetics and mechanism of wear it is very easy for you to judge the to assess the reliability of the component in actual service as well as to take precautions so that the failure does not occur because of the wear. So, in this uh, talk we discussed about uh, different types of wear and then uh, we discussed about the the parameters which influence the wear, the external factors which influence the wear kinetics, the way you can measure the wear kinetics and also mechanism and how to improve the uh, or minimize the wear rate of the material or component in service. Thank you very much.